Guys, I am so glad that you're here to watch today's video. You might be wondering why I have Easter decorations when this is a cake channel. That's because these are not decorations. It's actually edible. I have made here today Kataifi baklava bird nest. You might be saying, what in the world is Kataifi? It's basically phyllo dough that is shredded and it's perfect for making these realistic bird nests. There are a few steps to this, but don't be intimidated. I'll walk you through each step. It will be the best treat that you can serve for Easter or any other occasion that you have. Um, it's just a big wow factor with a big wow factor taste. So I'll show you how to do that. Stay tuned. So the first thing we wanna do is get our syrup going. So we're gonna get a saucepan and we're going to put half a cup of rose water, half a cup of regular water, one cup of sugar, the zest of one orange, two thirds of a cup of honey. Give it a quick little stir. You wanna turn this on medium heat for 15 to 20 minutes. Once that's done simmering, you wanna set it aside so it can cool down completely and we'll use it in a little bit. Now we're gonna get started on our raspberry curd. You're gonna put three cups of frozen raspberries, half a cup of sugar, half a cup of water, and two tablespoons of lemon juice. So what you're looking for at this point is the raspberries are completely broken down and the water has boiled out of it and it started to thicken up a little bit. So once the puree is done, there's gonna be a lot of seeds in there and we don't want that in our curd. So we're going to remove the seeds by pushing it through a mesh strainer. You wanna just take a spatula and push this through and get as much of the puree as you can. We're pretty close to getting most of what we want out of this and just have the seeds remaining. But I want to clean off my spatula and scrape the bottom to get all that thick raspberry puree off. Now we're gonna put that raspberry puree back in the pan and we're gonna finish our curd. Now we want to add to our raspberry puree six egg yolks six tablespoons of butter and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt and we're going to simmer this on low stirring constantly you're going to want to stir this for probably about 10 minutes until it starts to thicken up and it coats the back of the spoon now we're going to pour our raspberry curd into a heat safe bowl and we're gonna cover it with a layer of saran wrap so it doesn't get a film on the top of it. Now I'm gonna pop this in the fridge to let it cool down completely and set up. All right, now we're gonna work on our ganache that we're later going to whip and that's gonna fill that other half of the egg. So I'm taking one cup of dark chocolate chips or chunks because I like them chunky. And one cup of heavy whipping cream, and I'm just gonna pour that on top of the chocolate chunks. And I'm gonna put this in the microwave for about a minute or two, um, stirring it occasionally in between until it melts. All right, so now my chocolate is completely melted and incorporated in with the heavy cream, and I'm gonna set this aside and let it chill out and when it gets to about room temperature, then we'll come back and we'll whip it with a hand mixer and beat it on high for about two to three minutes until it's light and airy. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the actual baklava nests. And first we want to get our nut mixture going. And you're gonna want about 13 ounces of nuts. I like to use a mix of pistachios and walnuts. You're going to put the nuts into a food processor. You're gonna add a teaspoon of cardamom, 
three teaspoons of cinnamon, and two tablespoons of sugar. And we're going to pulse this until it gets really, really fine. If you have bigger chunks, it's not going to look as nice and it's gonna be a little bit harder to keep the nut mixture on the kataifi dough. The traditional way of preparing baklava involves melting your butter and painting it on the phyllo dough with a pastry brush. I found that that is very time consuming and got frustrated with the sheets of um, phyllo dough they would tear up and it was just a mess. So I came up with this method of using a spray bottle and I just pour my melted butter into a spray bottle. You can get it at a drugstore. Um, it just needs to be a pump action spray bottle that will allow you to have like a fine mist spraying out of it. And um, it just makes it go so much quicker and is a lot easier. So I'm gonna melt my butter and pour it into my spray bottle. For the baklava nest, we're going to use a little bit of different uh, phyllo dough than is typical in a traditional baklava. It's called karaifi phyllo dough, and um, it's basically just shredded phyllo dough, and it's a lot of fun to say. <laughs> karaifi, karaifi, karaifi. I like to use a mini cupcake pan in order to get the best shape for a nest, to have the, the proper cavity to put the egg inside of. You wanna take a section, probably about an inch wide of the kataifi dough and about eight to 10 inches long. And you're going to take your butter spray and generously spray that. You want it saturated in butter, basically. And then we're going to sprinkle our nut mixture on there, fold it over. You basically want to get as much of the nut mixture tangled up in the shredded phyllo dough as possible. So if you need to spray more butter, just be generous with that because that helps the nuts stay on the phyllo dough. Okay, so now that you've got that nut mixture mixed up all in the, the phyllo dough. You wanna pick it up and just wrap it around the mini muffin pan. Cause later we're gonna flip this over and it's gonna have that perfect little center for the egg to go in. So we're gonna keep doing that and fill up our pan as much as we can and then we'll come back. So now that we've got our nests made around the pans, we're going to just spray it with butter, just saturate it because that butter is gonna help crisp up that phyllo dough and make it really, really crunchy and beautiful golden brown. So we're gonna just spray the... I don't know what out of it. We're just gonna spray it really, really a lot. I'm happy with the amount of butter that I've got on here, so I'm gonna put these in a preheated oven at 350. You wanna cook them for about 10 to 15 minutes, but watch it, you want them to be a beautiful golden brown. You don't want them to be underdone, and you don't want them to get too crisp. Okay, so my baklava nests have been in the oven for about 10 minutes, and I'm gonna take them out and show you how to flip them over. All right, so I'm gonna put my sheet pan on top. Flip these over. Okay, so once we flip these over, some of them might have some square edges on it and you can just push those down and kind of shape that into a better circle. Don't be afraid to just play with the, the dough. It's, you're not going to ruin it at all. So once you have those the way you want, just Sprinkle some of the nut mixture in the bottom. So I'm gonna put these back in the oven for another two to three minutes so we can get that golden color on the tops of these and have that roasted flavor with the nuts that were not cooked previously. I just pulled these out of the oven and we need to immediately drizzle some of this um, syrup that we made before. You can see that it's thickened up quite a bit. You wanna drizzle it in the center and all around, probably about three tablespoons and let it just soak into all of the nooks and crannies of 
the kataifi dough. All right, now that we've got our syrup drizzled all over this, we're going to set this aside and let them cool completely. All right, so now we're getting to the fun part where we get to make the eggs. And um, I love using Wilton candy melts because it just simplifies things and makes them so much easier. They come pre-colored and you don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna do turquoise and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of white to just lighten that color up a little bit and I'm gonna melt them in the microwave and I'll show you how to make the shells. So this mold from Wilton is the perfect egg mold for what we're doing here today so I'll post a link to that down in the description. So now my candy melts are melted and I want to put them into my egg mold. I'm just gonna spoon them in each cavity and bring that up to the edges of the mold. Okay, once you've gotten those edges completely filled, you're going to turn this over into a pan and tap out the extra. You don't want to take out too much because then they'll be too thin to work with. But once you just give it a quick tap, you're going to take an angled spatula and scrape off the edges to clean it up. And now I'm gonna flip this over on top of parchment paper on a cookie sheet and put that in the fridge so it can set up and harden. So I've pulled these out of the fridge and you can see that by flipping it over onto the parchment paper, we've created a little bit of a flat lip here and that is gonna help us when we go to attach these um, two halves together. So I like to just kind of pull it to get it loose around the edge and then stick your fingers on the bottom side of the mold and just start to pull this back as you're pushing up on the mold. And it should come loose pretty easily. So I'm gonna take some piping bags and fill each one with my chocolate and with my raspberry curd. Now we're going to fill each half with our raspberry curd and our whipped ganache. So now we've got our eggshells filled with our ganache and our raspberry curd. I'm gonna take one of the halves with the ganache and I'm going to dip it into candy melts of the same color and then take a raspberry half and put it together. And then I'm just gonna use my finger to seal those two parts together. And if you have any little gaps like that, you can just get a little bit on your finger and wipe it on until you get a really nice seal on that. So now for my favorite part, I get to taste it. You're just gonna crack the egg open and just dig in, get a little bit of raspberry and chocolate. Mm. Mm. That's really, really good. That rose water is just the right amount. And the honey with the nuts is so good. You gotta try this. It's amazing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. I would love to hear any feedback you have. So you can either comment below or you can head over to my website and get a hold of me that way. Thank you so much. See you next time. I'm gonna show you how to make the most absolute delicious, the most absolute delicious. Wow, I need to go back to grammar school. What are those called again? Karaifi. It's karaifi if you'll like these or not. No, I'm just kidding. You will definitely like these. Check this out. I don't like you looking at me. I need to find out who I am. I'm a dork. 
Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am so stoked about today's video. This video, not today's video. Well, you're watching it today, so it is technically today's video, right? 